I only debate with my equals, all others I teach. What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back to the Chief Seats with Culture Meets Conversation. It's your boy, Big Mo, Age Rap. Rap, what's up, man? What's good, man? Chilling on this chilly Chicago day, man. Winter, man, we didn't skip winter. We went, I mean, we didn't skip far. We went right to winter, man. It's like 40 degrees outside. Oh, you serious? Bro, we had 80 degrees a day down here, man. 80. Man. Blow See, that's, that's, that, back. that's that Chicago, Carolina dynamic right there, man. Man, I'm telling you, man, this, this is crazy. I'm like, I see. it's snowed on Halloween, man. I, I man, I've been here 53 years, man. They ain't never snowed. It's, it's insane. I mean, hey, I need some global warming to happen, man. <laughs> need what? I need global warming to kick in, man. Oh, I thought you said. I thought you said something else. Welcome back to the Chief Seas, man. We appreciate y'all for tapping in, man. Shout out to everybody in the chat room. If you background listening, we appreciate you. For stepping in and 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 checking out our little podcast, you know what I'm saying. So, <laughs> as an inside joke, y'all ain't gonna get that. Y'all like but rap. Let them know what we're talking about tonight, man. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell a friend. Ain't no doubt. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend, man. Rap. Let them know what we're talking about this evening, man. Tonight we're gonna talk about culture. You know, um, I you know one of the things I rail on about on. Um, Build and destroy is is that our community is fractured. A lot of people, like, especially around this time of the year, right? You get a whole lot of people complaining. The holidays not like they used to be. First of all, we need to reestablish culture. We need to put ourselves in situations to where as we are reestablishing that foundation that made our community so wonderful. That made our you know that that, that, that we can walk we can walk down the street no matter where you are on earth. You see, see a black person from America, you're going to give him a nod and things of that nature. So we're going to reestablish culture. We're going to talk about reestablishing culture, what's missing, what is no longer acceptable and what is, what should be acceptable going forward. And I have a potential plan and, uh, and I hope to allow uh, 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 to institute something that makes our community stronger. And we're going to do it annually. We'll talk about that at the end of the show. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, well, before we dive deep into it, I'm going to ask you a question. I know we didn't talk about this, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Give me your definition of what black culture is right now, <clears throat> as you, in your work. Right now, or what it should be, or what it used to be? What it used to be, what it is right now, what it should be, in that order. What it used to be is, in my opinion, one gigantic family, one gigantic nationwide family. We still have remnants of that. But it is no longer a family. We've adapted to, I call it Americanism. I think we when we start being black, we start being African American and American. And what I mean by that, it's nothing wrong with being an American, a citizen of the United States of America, but we used to be black before we were anything. We used to love being around each other. And it used to be a us, us, us things like rent parties mm-hmm. and, and, and active and you know, you know, being proud, you know, say it loud, I'm brother, I'm proud. We used to talk about, you know, we used to be cultural things, cu- cultural meaning making. And what I mean by that is identifying with each other like the South. You down in the, in the Southern state, one of the Southern states, actually one of the most culturally rich states in the in the United States of America, if not the most culturally rich state in the United States of America, if you ask me personally. But we used to go down South to our parents' house. At one point, it was nothing for a black person to jump in the car and drive 16 hours just to see his cousin and then come back over the weekend. It was nothing. We mm-hmm. Now we, we got to the point where the South is, but when you up here in the Northern States, the South is beneath us. Look at them. We separate ourselves. We used to be one gigantic tribe. Now we are fractured into little mini tribes and we used, it's, it's divide and conquer, living and breathing. We used to be fashion. We used to be food. We used to be family. We used to be music. We're none of those things now. We used to be entertainment. We're none of those things now. What it is currently is a me thing. You know, everything is about me. We used to be, uh, most important, we used to be spiritual. Now, people trying to blame it on COVID, but people walking away from the church. Oh, man, I'm above that. You, you know, 
basically you've heard, you know, it used to be we listened to our elders and found out who we were spiritually, physically, mentally, socially, emotionally. Now we just listen to uh, uh, the people on TV and they tell us who and what we are. We listen to the TV and they say we're violent. So what we need to do is reestablish that. Now, to answer the third portion of that question, we need to start talking to each other. Just simple conversation will fix things. Right. We'll, we'll put up in the right frame of mind because <clears throat> we are listening not to judge, not to respond, but to understand at this at that point, we'll start understanding and caring again. Compassion is missing, caring is missing, it, it, you know, social socializing, socializing with each other, that's missing. And these things are missing dreadfully, and we are suffering because of this. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna before we dive into it, I'm gonna I'm gonna back up to something that you touched on. You talked about the church, and when I think mm-hmm. about black culture, like you know, I'm from South Carolina, Spartanburg, mm-hmm. South Carolina, born and raised. But the black church, the black church was like the center of the community, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. like that's why your your family, cousins, aunts, uncles. You know what I'm saying? I mean, in my household, you know, I ain't speaking for everybody. You know. That grew up mm-hmm. down here, but in my household, my grandmother. So I, what I would do, I would go over the weekend and I would stay with my grandmother. You know, my, my pops lived mm-hmm. there, my aunts were there, my cousins. Mm-hmm. Every Saturday, I mean, it is what it is. You know, what we do as kids, we we just have 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 a ball. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, pops out back playing the nickel poker, aunts them getting dressed mm-hmm. to step out for the evening. Grandma and that getting getting the stuff ready for dinner tomorrow. Sunday morning, though, no matter what, we going to church. And it was, I ain't even going to call it a tradition. It was just a way of life. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the things that you would experience and see in that church outside of the purpose for being there, which was, you know, just for the word or whatever. But it was, it was, that's black culture, bro. To me, that was a a big part of black. And it started right there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It started Mm -hmm. right there. That's your community right there. Everybody up in there, that's like, whatever it is, whatever resources that were provided to that community, it started from right there. And so I think mm-hmm. I'm, I'm glad you you threw that out there early. So mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, mean, if you think about it, man, the things that we know about, like when you say black history, the first thing you do when you are age, first thing you do is go right to the 60s. You, 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 it, it ain't, we act like it ain't no other a, a decade in black history but the 60s. But when you look at the most popular people from those, from the civil rights movement, Ralph Abernathy, uh, 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 Aretha Franklin Daddy, C.D. Franklin, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X. All of those men come from a spiritual base. Yep. So you're right. I mean, what the, the bus, the Alabama bus, the uh, Alabama bus boycott that started from a, a spiritual situation. You know, we started off in the church. Dr. King last church and I mean, last speech in Memphis was at a church. You're right. The church. Once we get back into the church, it stop. Look, man, if you don't if you don't agree with the doctrine of the church, you still need to know everybody in that community. Like a lot of our grandfathers didn't go to church. Right. But our uncles and cousins and, and you know, a lot of other men went because they understood when you went to church, you will get not only will you get something spiritually, you get something socially. You find out who fixing cars, you find out who installing uh, uh, air conditioning, mm-hmm. you find out who repairing rules, you will find out who hiring. The, when you got a central nervous system of a community that is like that, then you can, re, that's the foundation, as you stated, that's the foundation of the community. Dr. Uh, uh, DeForest Buckner in New Jersey, he recreated a city in, in, in the congregate. He went and rented a trailer and told everybody in the congregation, meet me in the trailer with your complaint. He took the, which, whichever complaint was the most, he got that fixed. He said the, the, the top three was no bank. This number two was no grocery store. Number one was these kids keep getting hit on this corner. He got a, a stoplight put up and the church opened up a grocery store. And now he's he he's literally building homes and selling them at cost. Yeah. So you get a house at the cost it costs to build. So if it costs $160,000, you get the $160,000 back. And it ain't substandard housing. He building it with high quality. This is what we need to get back into. Mm-hmm. And he 
uh, 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 man, this dude is 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 it's exactly what the church is supposed to be about, and I truly appreciate and respect that brother, man. He, he he's super dope. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope, bro. I, I I know I had to tell you about this. I mean, we chop it up all the time, but my granddaddy, my grandfather. Yeah, I remember that you, yeah. Dude, just listen, you you in grand you in debt, we called him Daddy Frank. You in Daddy Frank crib, you already know what time it is. It's the dude that's gonna get up on Sunday morning. Ain't nobody touching their plate before he eat. And he gonna pray for about 45 minutes over that food first. So <laughs> you probably gonna go to church on an empty stomach after you done you know, ate a cold biscuit or something, but that's just how he got down. But he was he was one of those figures in the community, right? And I mean, I, I feel like, and I know we're talking about black culture, but I feel like it's important to kind of go back a little bit first. You know what I'm saying? To understand the origins of what made it the culture that we call the black culture today. But he was one of those cats who was like the pillar in, a pillar in the neighborhood who people rallied around. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And this is, I mean, you're talking about a man who was born and he was, he's not my biological grandfather. He was my, um, he adopted my grandmother. So he was mm -hmm. born in 1900, January 1st. It would have been 123 today. So mm -hmm. older guy, seen a lot, been through a lot. Mm -hmm. And the game that you get from him, I mean, it, it, it's priceless. And I watched him and them cats with their suits on and whatnot. I mean, they on the bridge holding rifles, waiting mm -hmm. on the clan to pull up with suits mm -hmm. on going to war in suits, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just how they did it back then. But people like him, you know, who was a hero to me and some others, man, they just kind of curated that that culture for me. You know, and that's just. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, you know what, man? Back then, it seemed like like Daddy Frank, ironically, my great grandfather, we used to call him Daddy Whitmore. That's his last name, Whitmore. Mm. And, and, and you didn't mind being older. People shamed of being old now, like, I've had people ask me, when you going to die your bed second Tuesday next week? I'd be glad when it go all right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't never die in my joint, man. You ain't going to die, bro. Never. Never, man. I want it all to be great. I want it. It's funny. It just look funny to me. Just this part great and this part black. It looked like I'd have done something to it. But nah, I'm glad to be older, man. I mean, I'm trying to, my first I'm trying homeboy to find died. Mine. Hey, man. My first homeboy died when I was 16. And I had a bunch of homeboys die over the COVID. I'm glad to mm. be here. I want it all to be great. I don't care. I'm not dying nothing. Yeah. I'm not dying anything. But the older men in the community used to shape the community. Like you said, man, my daddy with more. Like him and his brothers, they used to, him and my uncle Alma, my great his wife's brother. I think that's my uncle Alma's his wife's brother, I think. I'm not sure, but he's my uncle Alma, so he got to be. Uh, him, Daddy Whitmore, his brothers, my uncle Alma, they used to all posse up and they had like a 30 foot, 20 foot boat that they'd pull into the uh, 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 driveway and they'd be gone all day. They could pull up about six in the morning, they'd be gone to about midnight and they out there on that lake. And then you see them the next day, they all standing in front of Daddy Whitmore house with these suits on. They look like mobsters, man. They look like a bunch of black gangsters, man. And it was it was it was a sight to see it. I, and we talked about look, look type of impression it made on me. I was I couldn't have been older than six or seven seeing that, and I still yeah. see it. And we've gotten away from that. And I'm one of the problems because I don't like wearing suits. So maybe being a, a a middle aged man, maybe I do need to start wearing suits more. You know, maybe I'm part of the problem. I don't know, but we need to reestablish that hierarchy in the community. See, yeah. one of the things that bothers me is I, I, I watch a lot of YouTube. I read a lot of books and things of that nature. And nobody wants to be an elder anymore. See, this is what the problem is. Okay, well, what are we going to do? What's the answer? So the answer, in my opinion, is men, middle-aged men like myself, we're going to have to step up and show out. We And that's what the, the last thing we're going to talk about tonight is potentially step one and resolving this issue, if you ask me. Yeah. You talked about <clears throat> the, you know, middle-aged man, people stepping up and whatnot. What's interesting to me, though, is we the only community that have what we consider leaders, like mm -hmm. leaders in the black community. What I mean by that is it's like you got our, we got our spokesmen, our spoke, you know, mm -hmm. spokespeople, whatever, right? You don't see that in the Jewish community. 
You don't see that in the Asian community, the Mexican, you know, Hispanic community. You only see it in the black communities where we got those select few that they point to. Like if it's a black issue or something, right? A nationwide mm -hmm. black issue. We expect certain individuals like your Jesse Jacksons or Al Sharpton's to speak on our behalf. Mm -hmm. I want you to touch on that one for me real quick. I mean, you know what? I think Is that those a good thing or a bad thing? I guess that's what I'm asking. I think it's it's I, I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, it's a good thing because at least you have someone advocating for you, right? Right. And when you have somebody advocating for you, hopefully, and in most cases, Reverend Sharpton, he's gotten a lot better in my opinion, in my lifetime over the last thirty five years. I think he got a lot better. Uh, Jesse Jackson was always very good at it. Martin King, Huey Newton, uh, uh, Bobby Seals, Fred Hampton, so forth and so on. I think. What we have to do is if we're going to continue that tradition, Big Mo is the spokesman for South Carolina, but Nino need to be here and then Joe need to be there and then Nino's son need to be here and then Mo's son need to be there and then so forth and so on. We need to have a, a bridge because we've seen in the event that you have an organization and a leader, people in the United States federal government who have power, they have annihilated each one of these men. Hmm. They Who's the dude who stepped up? Uh, 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 next, created Muslim Mosque Incorporated. Who, who's who's supposed to step up? Now, Jane Smalls is doing the good work, but how many people know who Jane Smalls is? Right. Then you had uh, uh, Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. For a while, he had to do that. Wallace Dean started, he got he deviated from the plan, and then Farrakhan took over the late seventies. But who's who's next for Farrakhan? We need to know who's next for Farrakhan. We need to know five people down. And if you're gonna have that leadership ability, you know, you have that leadership structure, you need to have a vice like just like the government, vice president, the president, the uh uh the the, the, uh, the head of the Senate, the speaker of the house, mm -hmm. you know, so the state secretary of state, so forth and so on. You must have if you're gonna have that, we must create the structure. The bad thing is 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 this. Nobody is willing to step up on a communal level. It, you, we need to be like, hey, you need to have a block club president. If we're going to do it, we, where's the block club president? Then the mm -hmm. block club presidents need to get together and then have a community president, a, 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 precinct, a precinct captain is what they call it in, in Chicago. And now you got the precinct captain. He's going to talk to the alderman. Alderman going to talk to the uh to the uh, uh, state representative, state representative going to talk to the state senator, state senators just talk, state senators, state reps talk to the U.S. senator. We need to, if, if we're going to do it, we need to do it. And that's what's not happening. These ladies, a lot of the ladies are stepping up, big ups to the ladies. And if you into uh, astrology, it's the age of Aquarius, mean women going to step up and take over, which seems to be happening. We need to support the women who are doing it instead of wagging our finger, listening to social media, saying, see, that's what's wrong with these women getting faked out because all I want to know is this, man. How is it that the lady who was talking about she can't go to the Cheesecake Factory, you just happen to be that being recorded? <laughs> Knock it off, man. We, we, we selling ourselves out for money. You know, look, mm -hmm. money is, 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 is the life source, is a life source. But I'm not going to sell myself out for money. Now I'm gonna make sure my children and my woman and my grandchildren, we gonna eat. If I gotta work 24 hours a day, I'm gonna make sure they're gonna eat. But I'm not finna whore myself out to eat. And again, once the men and women, the ladies, men, the elders are already done, they they can't do no, they 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 should be advisors. We should be the generals and the presidents. And then we need to be grooming our children and our grandchildren to step into it. So I do believe it's leadership in other communities. But the thing is, we're under attack, in my personal opinion, more than those other communities. So our leaders are out front. And they, and they put them out front to make it, in my opinion, again, to make it seem, I'm stop saying in my opinion, I'm talking so clearly, it's my opinion. Uh, I believe they, they're put out front to make us look as if we're whining. Yeah. And if we're whining too much, then guess what's going to happen? Nobody's going to want to help us because uh, they're whining again. So they always going to put Al Sharpton on TV. They're always going to put Louis Farrakhan on TV. They're always going to put Reverend Jackson on TV because if we're lying, here they go again. It's to create a negative image and a negative uh, situation. So, bam, 
you get put popped in the head like that. That's just that's you know that's yeah. the way I see. It. Yeah, I always thought that was interesting though. I mean, that's something I thought about years ago, and I'm like, I've never, I've never stopped to think about it, and never really saw it anywhere else. But you know, it can kind of go both ways, man. But <clears throat> switching up a little bit, man. You talk about black culture, black culture. That's black cuisine. That's black music, black film, black cinema. You know what I'm saying? The way we carry ourselves, the way we dress, all of that stuff. And so <clears throat> now it's like, like me, you had a conversation the other day about, about conducting, about doing business, doing, doing business with black owned businesses and particularly mm -hmm. restaurants, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the service level, you know, to some degree or whatever. I want you to speak on that for me, bro. Yeah, man, this is uh, a couple of weeks ago. My daughter flew out on her friends, flew to Miami. And on the way to the airport, we just start having a conversation because she know she know my, my daughter, me, my grand, my father, me, and my daughter we're connected because we got this pro black thing going. And Bria is intense. She loves to laugh and joke, but she's intense. She might even be more intense than I am at this point because I've been listening to her. She's a little more advanced. She's way more advanced than I was at twenty five, but she's intense. She probably got it directly from my grandfather. And uh. Hmm. Thing is, we, you know, we were talking and she was like, man, man, dad, I'm going to uh, push pause on black businesses for a little while. I said, hey, what's going on? She said she's going to push pause on it. Yeah. I ain't mean that I ain't going up to it. And I said, so what's up with that? And I, she was like, uh, she was like, man, the customer service is terrible. And then she went on and proceeded to tell me about uh, this place called, I forgot, it's the steakhouse. And the steakhouse, first of all, it, they had reservations. Her and her mother had reservations at 8 o'clock. And at 8 o'clock, they wasn't ready to be seated. It's 9.30 and they finally get seated. But they get seated in like a corner. You know, like when you watch people, when you see movies, they got a call section off in the club. Mm -hmm. They got they, they sit in a section like that, so they eat like this. And then they got somebody else right next to them that they don't know. Strike one and two. I got a reservation, which means I reserve to eat at this time. Strike two, you you sit me next to some strangers and let me and my mother eat. Strike two. And then she said the late, she said she likes her food medium well. The lady gave it to her not only well, but burnt. And then argued with her. And then it came back. They wrote it. They, they had the software. They got the new software, so you could see what it was. And then when the receipt came back, she said, "Oh my God, you did earn it. You, you did ask for a medium well." She was like, "Yeah, don't worry about it. I ain't coming back no way." And the thing, the, the, the thing, her strike three was. She's like, and, and most importantly, how you a white woman argue with me at a black staff? <laughs> <laughs> so it's. It, yeah, that's a strike for sure. Yes, yeah, that's, that's definitely a strike, you know. But the thing is, it's commonplace. And then she told me about this jerk place I ended up going to, and they treated me just like trash, just like they treated her. And it's almost like being disrespected, being condescended to, being dismissive is part is part of our customer service culture. No, it's not because. When our counterparts from other communities come in, especially the white community, they don't do that. And what's the, you know, so the issue is, why is it that we're so comfortable disrespecting each other, but we will trip over each other and fall up, fall up, fall over our feet serving yeah, other You said it, boy. You said it. And I, that's why I was going to go. Because we got to understand that we already been conditioned to where we feel like, okay, this right here is the standard, right? I mean, come on, you know how it is. We always been skeptical about doing business with each other. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because that, that what's the word I'm looking for? That stigma is already on us. Like we not going to be professional with our business. We, the quality not going to be the same. You know what I'm saying? Don't go over here and deal with Yvette's call out, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we used to that, 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 that white branding if I'm being honest mm -hmm. with you. And <clears throat> we got to get away from that because I hate stuff like, I hate terms like CP time, you know, shit like that. It's like, mm -hmm. dude, that's, that's, we got, we got to kill all of that because mm -hmm. I did business uh, years ago, me and my wife, 
you know, God rest her soul. We uh we bought a house. We dealt mm-hmm. with some black realtors. And I ain't gonna get all too deep in the story, but it was a horrible experience, right? Mm-hmm. But I didn't wanna be like, okay, just because this is how they do business, I'm gonna just mm-hmm. stop doing business with all black folk. But mm-hmm. that's how we think sometimes. I mean, we get real, you know, apprehensive about that. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I mean, whether you're going to do taxes or something like that, I mean, let's just just mm-hmm. just, you know, level up. Level up. I mean, because at the end of the day, quality is quality. And if I'm getting good service here, if I'm getting quality here, that's where I'm going to do my business at. I would love to support everybody that got got something going on, man. I would love to do that. But at the end of the day, give me a reason to do business with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and see, what, what, what really disturbs me about it is this. You, unlike most people, said that's them. Most people will go, I'm done with black. See, that's why I don't deal with uh black folks. Or like my cousin Eric. Eric cuts corners at every chance he gets and then complains about the service. I mean, holy, you can't go get a crackhead to fix whatever you're trying to get fixed. Yeah, he used to be an electrician and he a drug addict now. You can't go get him to do it and then say, hey man, see, that's a brother for you. And he ain't say brother. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yep. You can't you can't dig in the garbage and expect to find a diamond. Just like when you go into an establishment, even if they make a mistake that one time, you cannot write them off totally because they made a mistake. No, right. we're not doing that. Yeah, they made a mistake. They 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 did they were not up to par, but just like hey. Just like how many, it ain't a person living a dead on earth. Or if it if it's any, it ain't many that ain't going into Burger King, McDonald's, White Castle, Chick-fil-A or wherever and got their order messed up. But you oh, still yeah. go back. So we have to stop canceling the, the black business that gives you poor service that one day. But again, this, is, this goes back to the top of the conversation. If we were at the church, or at community active having communal activities and we go into big mo's steakhouse and a trap acts a fool a trap is the breeder and he acts a fool or, or, or whatever they call it greeter made a d or whatever it is a trap is the greeter or the made a d and he acts a fool or the server and, and, and i act a fool with you guess what what you say your name was oh a trap okay cool so sunday or the communal activity, I can go to hey, hey Mo. You need to talk to that kid, H Rap. They did their job, but he was rude. Maybe he was having a bad day, but he was rude. He was rude. What we need yeah. to do is start just checking it in the door. You having a bad day? You know what? Whatever your your significant other did, or whatever your children did, or whatever your relative did to get under your skin, I'm gonna need you to check that at the door. Or you can always go home and I do your job. Mm. And that's what we need to, you know, it, it, it's amazing how everybody at Chick-fil-A, I remember that day you told me, he's like, man, the Chick-fil-A people ain't even real. I ain't never seen one of them outside of Chick-fil-A. I think they go charge after work. It was funny, but I've never had somebody treat me rude at a Chick-fil-A. Nope. Nope. Never. But those same people at Chick-fil-A, if they was working at Mo's Steakhouse, one of them would be chicken necking. The dude would be, what, mm. what? He'd be uber aggressive. Yep. And, and, and 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 it's because it's us. But then, and I I literally experienced it at the very at the very jerk place I was telling you about. I walk in, dude, look me in my eye, finished making a drink, fin- he cleaned the glass, dried the glass, made the poured the drink, took it to the table, came back, looked at me, and said, "You ready to order?" I was like, "I'm picking up something." Hmm. And he could have simply, when he locked eyes with me, say, hey, brother, let me do this. I'll be right with you. At that point, I'm relaxing. I'm yeah. relaxing. And I'm I'm ready. I'm, I'm prepared to wait. It's the little simple things like that, that when it comes to dealing with each other, interpersonals, we seem to be lacking. Yeah. And that, and unfortunately, bro, a part of the, a part of our culture is, when we do business with each other, it's like, okay, well, I'm doing business with you, so you should expect 
this from me because you know how we get down. And we already going to tear each other down. I ain't gonna, I'm not going to say we tear each other down more than most. But, you know, we tear each other down enough to where you already starting. You, know, you don't have a head start in this thing. So we ain't got time for that. You know what I'm saying? We need to be, like you just said, you know, just instead of just dismissing the business, go ahead and let them know, okay, listen, this is where you weak at. This is where you need to step up at. You know, just my opinion as a customer, bro. I'm, I want to do business with you, but I don't like how your man met me at the door. You know, I don't like how your waitress, you know, treated me when she came to the table. I don't know what that is. But, <clears throat> I mean, it's um, that's the kind of stuff that... That's the kind of stuff that that kind of is, is woven into our culture at this point. Yes, yes. And it used to be anti that. It, but see, mm-hmm. again, it's this restaurant across the street from my crib, me and Big Illinois, where me and Big Illinois grew up at. It's called Terry's. And you you didn't, if you went in, no, Jerry's, Jerry's. Terry's was a grocery store. It was his homeboy. You couldn't go in. You go in Jerry's. My man, Big T Mom, was the, uh, ran the register. She greeted you like you own a joint every day, every day. Uh, I can't, I can't think of her name right now. Big T, mom treated you like you own a joint. Appreciate every you, Danielle. Day. Huh? Nah, I was saluting Danielle. She was saying we were throwing oh, out some gems. Oh yeah, oh thank you, Danielle. Uh, yeah, man, and 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 because we knew Terry's. Another thing, another way. That's another way you build community, like. You go down to Terry's. If your mom was broke, it was a bunch of times I went in uh, the Terry's, the grocery store. He write down what Miss Such and Such was getting today. He handed her free food to Friday when she ever went out when she got paid or whatever. This is the way you build community. If you don't know anybody, how you how are you gonna expect quality at all times? Mm-hmm. No, because that's what Big T mom, Big T and Tote mom. She wasn't nice because uh, uh, she was gonna get in trouble. She was nice because, for one, I we didn't eat McDonald's until I started working at McDonald's to to pay for prom and stuff like that. That's when we started eating McDonald's. Uh, uh, we ate at Jerry's or at Terry's or at Sammy's mm-hmm. down the block. And you know, I it, we was a self-contained community. So when people go. Like back in the day. Well, if you mean in the 80s and the 90s, yeah, that's back in the day because we had a Chester's Pizza, black on. Yeah. Farmer Brown barbecue joint, black on. Terry's, uh, uh, Terry's, black on grocery store. Jerry's, black on fast food. T- Terry, uh, Jerry even opened up a sit down joint, like a diner. We didn't, we, we had black leather stores. And this is in the 80s and the 90s. This ain't, oh, back when my mama and I was living, this is when I was growing up. So, it's not mm-hmm. like it's far fetched. It's just you must create a community, and then be interpersonal with your community, and then because you won't go going to Terry's or Jerry's and cutting up, because you cut up and Jerry was there, Terry or Jerry, they would get on you, and then when they saw your mama, your mama was gonna get on you. And again, mm-hmm. it's it's that is black culture. It takes a village. We really used to live by the code. It takes a village, but now it's now you, you ain't my baby daddy. You ain't my you ain't his daddy. You, you ain't say, you ain't her mama. No, you can't even no. talk to nobody kids right now, bro. Exactly. I'm, I'm talking about nieces, nephews, look, cuz you can't even talk to them like that no more. But yeah, again, man, like I said, bro, that's just, that's the culture is is evolving into something different. So, Devolve. but yeah, that's would you say devolving? Yeah. Yeah, I'm right. I'm going to use that one. But that's what's happening with us, man. But <clears throat> let's switch over, though, because, you know, you got a lot of different elements that build up the culture. And one of them is entertainment. So mm-hmm. you talked to me earlier about how it's changing and if, if is it evolving or devolving. So, like, mm-hmm. just, just, you know, I guess music in general, you know what I'm saying, where you see it going right now and, and the impact that it's having on, on the culture. Because well, to me... I'm going to say this as a little sidebar. Black culture is world culture right now at this point. We the biggest influence on the planet. But go ahead, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? And, and we the biggest influence on the planet, partially. And, and, and hip-hop plays a major major part in that. Hip-hop mm-hmm. culture has taken over the world. And hip-hop culture was made out of lack. And we've done things out of lack since we've been in this country. But just because you're doing things out of lack does not mean 
does not mean you must live in lack. Boosie Collins put together his first bass. He made it. He's one of the greatest bass players in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. Now, he's still yeah, playing on that bass. Yeah, he put it, he pieced it together, bit by bit by And some of the records that we love were made on that bass. Mm. So, yeah, that's out of lack. But hip hop was created out of lack, 1980. And like I've been telling people, if you uh, uh, if you watched the show last night, it's this thing called Project 2025. The same people that bankrolled Project 2025 and funded the Reaganomics and things of that nature, they still after us to this day. But back to this. You you, you 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 took away like people say hey man the music ain't like it used to be well it's it's not the music isn't like it used to be what is accepted by us ain't like it used to be it's always been raunchy music on tv i mean on the radio rick james got a song about mary jane and if you're dumb enough to believe it that's a girl <laughs> you are a complete idiot he, this man talking about smoking weed so right. you know, if you, if you listen to some of the lyrics and some of our old songs, you'd be like, "Oh my God, they said that on the radio," and that's what hip hop used to be. But the further you get away from the music that hip hop was, the bridge that connected us to the old music, there's no instrumentation. That that mm -hmm. and with no instrumentation, you take away the soul. You take away the soul. You you. You dis, you take away, you reduce the power of the soul and the individual. You reduce the power of the soul and the individual. That leaks off into the radio. Hey man, I used to love Lil John. I used, I'm, I'm, a, I one, one of the big Illinois. One of his favorite guys is Scarface. I introduced him to Scarface. This is what goes on in the wow. mind of the woman. It's one of my favorite songs. So I'm not sitting here saying we shouldn't have those kinds of songs, but it has to be a balance. Anytime I talk about something of this nature, it takes me back to when Married with Children first got on TV. It was a white lady in the state of Michigan, almost single-handedly got that show taken off TV. Mm. So if if she can almost get something single-handedly taken off TV with a writer's campaign, with social media, and with social media and 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 and, and uh, an email, we can all we can pull up a, a petition. And stop petitioning every radio station in the world. Well, I need to hear some more her. I need to hear some more Badu. I need to hear some more NDRE. I need to hear some more D'Angelo. I need to hear some more Neo. I need to hear some more Doc. I need to hear some more Tyrese. I need to hear some J I I I like the raunchy music too. I, I mean, I love hip hop, but I can't love hip hop and not be into outrageous music. But there is no balance. And if you if you are what you eat and you are also are what you intake. You know, mm -hmm. like Keish. Keish will not watch an extremely violent movie. Will not. Mm -hmm. uh -uh, I'm not watching that. She won't watch it. Uh, uh, uh. Like it's it's a bunch of people that won't listen to raunchy music because I'm not gonna let that enter my spirit. But we allow these things to enter our spirit, and then we wonder why you put demonic you put demonic things in your ears. You put you you watch demonic things and then you wonder why your children, your grandchildren, and you have evil, wicked, and demonic thoughts. I might sound like an old man. I am an old man. I might sound old fashioned, but you are outside your entire mind if you believe, if you don't understand that hip hop and raunchy and other forms of raunchy music is the reason the world is in the situation it's in today. How many times have you been on the way to work? And put on a, a little John and East Side Boys, and that and that the room that it, it's, it lifted your spirit. And I guarantee you, get into the car when your significant other piss you off, and listen to some of that slap your woman rap. You gonna still be mad at her, but you know what? You put on some Teddy P, you put on some Harbor, my latest and greatest inspiration. I guarantee you, you'll start thinking about that that woman or that man. Going, you know what? You pissed me off, but I remember that time you dot dot dot, and that's just the way it works. Rap gonna be in the car, apologize, and you gonna put on the Manhattans and start apologizing. <laughs> Go ahead with that, man. But you, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I agree with you, and I disagree with you. I'm gonna, tell, I'm, I'm gonna explain what I mean by that. So, I right, yeah, music very influential. You know how much I love music, man. I, 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 I live, breathe music, and for me. 
that are, there has always been music for whatever it is, whatever mm -hmm. vibe I'm in. I can go mm -hmm. and find a song that's gonna speak to that that energy. You know what I'm saying? And and you know, I learned how to kind of the balance thing that you talked about. Like if I'm if I'm if I'm in one of those moods where okay, I need to do something and get these spirit, get my spirit up. I got music for that. I'm not gonna mm -hmm. feed it by playing something that ain't gonna do nothing but depress the hell out of me. You know, mm -hmm. if I'm arguing with my woman, I'm not gonna play nothing that's gonna make me want to slap the hell out of her. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mm -hmm. switch it up. You know what I'm saying? But I, I I agree and I disagree because I feel like that's something that you can you can manage. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The music is gonna be put out there, and and that's the problem is how it's being put out there because it's good music out here, bro. Mm -hmm. It's good music out here. But it's a business. It's a big business now. It's, it's bigger than it's mm -hmm. ever been. And hip hop, mm -hmm. R&B is primarily responsible for that. Mm -hmm. It's pop music mm -hmm. now. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. You had genres of music, especially when it comes to black music. You had so much diversity, but now mm -hmm. it's all popular music. It's pop. It's on the pop charts. Pop <laughs> smoke on the pop charts. I don't know a lot of these young cats' names, but uh, what's what's the little dude that 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 talk funny? Sound like he sleep when he rapping. Uh, Lil Baby. Yeah. Uh, oh, you talking about Kodak? Yeah, I don't know what the hell wrong with yeah, that. Boy. Yeah. But yeah. He's not, but, he got a boss soap in his mouth when he talk. Yeah, what? He sound like he got a boss soap in his mouth when he start talking. <laughs> but I mean, it, it's crazy because I love to see them young cats do what they do because mm -hmm. we had our we had our music for our generation. Our parents had theirs. Mm -hmm. So now my kids got their music. Ain't into it like that, but that's your lane. That's your thing right there. But mm -hmm. What's being pushed, what's being marketed, is the same thing over and over and over again. And that's programming. Mm -hmm. That's why I call mm -hmm. it a radio program, a television program. It's programming now. Mm -hmm. And Indeed. they telling you how to think. They telling you what's what's mm -hmm. what's good and what's not based on where it charts or based on how often it's in rotation. And I think <laughs> that's the problem more so than the music itself. Well, no, but that's exactly what I'm saying. No, no, no. We are saying the exact okay, same right, thing. Okay. Uh, I, I misunderstood you. That's my fault. I said, we need I, play Kodak Black, but I need you to also play some J Cole, and then I need you to play some Her, and then I need you to play some uh, uh mm -hmm. what's her name Sullivan, and then I need you Jazz. to play some uh, Jasmine Sullivan. I need you to play some NDRE. I need you to play some Beyonce. I need you to play some Carrie Hillison, and so forth and so on. I need it all played. I mean, see, Carrie Hillison might not never get back on the radio. All right, now, she, yeah, she did Beyonce. She been she been working at. Yeah, it's a wrap for her. Time. It's a wrap for her. But we got Jasmine Sullivan. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just uh, uh, uh trap music is drip. Yeah, yeah. My, my nephew just said that. Uh, uh, yeah, man. It's just we. It, it's so single minded, and the removal is the is the is the Chuck D declared war on black radio in 1986, and we need to do the same. We need to pick up the fight. We need to pick up the fight because De La Soul is make, still making music. Tri Call Quest is still making music. J. Cole is making music. It's a bunch of people making that that old school music. But then I need to hear me some raunchy music sometime, man. Raunchy music mm -hmm. can help you or lift you up in the morning because you hit the window. You 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 bouncing up out mm -hmm. the bed. Because it's fun. So, but we got to the point where all the music is starting to sound alike. They talking about the exact same thing. And guess what? At one point, the reason I put this on the list, at one point in the world, you could tell what was going on in the world by turning on the radio. Yep. You can't do that now. If you turn on the radio now, all the women skanks, all the dudes hoodlums, mm -hmm. and, and ain't nobody on nothing. I was listening to some old school hip hop the other day. And that was today. I was listening to old school hip hop today. They talking about safe sex. In the middle, we're talking about smoking weed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, <laughs> what song was you listening to? A, 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 a EPMD song. And they was talking, he was like, no, 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 I had to have my gym hat. I had to, I oh, had yeah, weed yeah, 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 yeah. I know which one yeah, you're talking man. about, too. Yeah, and I'm like, man, this dude talking about going to hook up with a lady. He, he, gonna, he, gonna, he gonna practice safe sex. He drinking and smoking weed before he get there. So it ain't like we wasn't talking about that, but 
we put it in, we put it into, uh, 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 we put it in the mix. Me and Ready Kev used to do a show together. <clears throat> and I played a song from the 1920s. And the lady was talking about how good her coochie was. And she literally said, if I get got a real, these niggas still gonna want some of this coochie. And she did not say coochie. So mm. I'm not gonna pretend that this raunchy music is new, but what we have to do she is, get back, is get back to playing all of the music. I'm old, I'm a little older than you, Mo. I can remember when there wasn't no such thing as black music. We weren't mm. calling it black music. It was so, it was some of it was called soul music, mm. but I can remember, hey, hey, I can sing some KC and the Sunshine Band right now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I remember listening to Captain and Tennille. Yep. You know what I mean? You was exposed to what you was exposed to. Exactly. I could, uh, Rocket Man, one of the dopest songs in the history of the world. Elton John. <laughs> so, Up in Chicago, was, listening to Journey. Man, man, <laughs> Tower Power. You know what I mean? We was listening to everything. And then we allow people to slowly, systematically separate the human beings. Look, we go all we all just like the animals in the jungle. You got you got chimpanzees, you got apes, you got monkeys, you got and, and that's the primate situation. You got iguana, mm -hmm. you got lizards, you got alligators, you got uh, what's those uh, what's those things in, in that's from South America? Uh, 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 I can't think of there's some big strong lizards. You got lions, oh, you got tigers, uh, you got Komodo dragons, something like that. Komodo dragons, yeah. You got difference to everything, but they're all part of it. We're all part of nature, and they we've allowed people to separate us the same way. We, you know, mm -hmm. they those animals live in their own areas and they cross paths all the time. Hippopotamus walk past with rhinoceros. Uh, 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 Cape buffalo walk past lions. Now, when they get mm -hmm. hungry, them cape buffaloes better watch out. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they are part of an ecosystem. Birds flying around, and, and there is no such thing. It's the bird portion of the earth, the giraffe portion of the earth. No, everybody, and we've allowed people to separate us, and when we allow people to separate us, we didn't hold on to what was near and dear to us. Yeah, and when you, when that instrumentation was taken out of music, <clears throat> Barry White said it in 1981. I put it on my reel the other day. Technology is he said this in 1981. He said, "Man, studios closing all over the world. Technology is taking over. Before soon, they're not gonna need us, and not AI mm -hmm. can get. Now you got people making AI biggie verses. Yep. They're not gonna need us. We've yep. allowed them <clears throat> to take out us out of this." That's it. That's it. I mean, like, look what we doing right here, bro. We broadcasting. You all the way up in Chicago. I'm in Carolina. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right here on, on, on the computer broadcasting to whoever going to tap into our little podcast. But, <clears throat> bro, listen, at the end of the day, you talking about different elements that build up our culture and it's got to be protected in order for it to, to strengthen and grow. And I feel like part of that is number one accountability. Like you talked about with with the customer service. Listen, as black people dealing with these black businesses, let them know what's up. Let them know what the weaknesses are. Let them know what the problem is. You know, just have that accountability. And then you're talking about ownership, entertainment industry. Like we got to start controlling our stuff. You know what I'm saying? We gotta we gotta start having more control over our arts, our content. <laughs> Right, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you talked about the diversity and and the, the type of music that's being put out there, ain't nothing wrong with Kodak being on the radio, you know what nope. I'm saying? But we still need variety. We still need because it's, it's got to be something for everybody. Otherwise, now you're just kind of excluding an entire demographic, right? And you're not exposing what else we have to offer to the rest of the world, mm -hmm. you know. So it's all about ownership. It's all about accountability, and it's all about you know just just us stepping up you know we mm -hmm. talked about the leaders in the communities the leaders in the black community it's on us now you mm -hmm. know so what do we're we at well since we're getting ready to shut it down this is what i want to suggest to us look back in uh what was that june june 2021 june 2021 
2021, in May 2021, uh, uh, our, our brother George Floyd was exterminated. His life was taken from him by a rogue uh, police officer. I ain't going to say his name because when you say somebody's name, they live on forever, so we're not going to say his name. But our brother George Floyd was exterminated. Millions of people worldwide stood up and protested that. To the point where as, you know, this, this, this is, I'm a firm believer in uh, 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 our spiritual ancestors control, control a lot what's going on. For example, George Floyd, Galveston, Texas, right? On Galveston, Texas. Galveston, Texas is the home of Juneteenth. Mm. George Floyd from Galveston, Texas, the home of Juneteenth, was killed May 25th, 2021, 100 years since the Tulsa riots to the day. Wow. To the day. So it was a waking, it, it woke us up. Next thing you know, so now this triggers the, the, the Tulsa, Oklahoma riot information. It triggers the Galveston information, which Juneteenth uh, in New York City creates the Juneteenth holiday. Then they created to a uh, they they it, it evolves to a Juneteenth national holiday. A lot of people didn't even know what Juneteenth was. So thank you, Jesus, that the world that more people in our community understood what Juneteenth was, is, and always will be. For just for a fun fact, the original Juneteenth is January first, eighteen sixty three. That's the day that the Emancipation Proclamation went into effect. Now, now we Juneteenth is the nineteenth of June, and we celebrate the, emanci the, 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 the the unofficial emancipation of our of our community. People came into Galveston, Texas. Some black soldiers rolled a train, rolled down, told old boy, read read the edict, and free emancipated our enslaved ancestors. Salute to those brothers who was on them horses and put them pistols on that dude and say, you're going to let our people go. Mm -hmm. Big up. But since 2021, our holiday has been commandeered. And what I mean by it being commandeered, now they're trying to turn it into this multicultural freedom for everybody thing. No, that's our mm -hmm. day. But instead of arguing, I propose this to everybody who's going to listen, who is listening, and I pray that you tell your friends and family this. I want to make the first Saturday of every June into perpetuity, meaning forever. Like a, it's the unofficial June team, AKA Black Thanksgiving. See, they gave us the holiday and, I, and I'm glad for it. Some of us are going to get the day off work. We're going to be able to celebrate. But if we take a day ourselves, we make it our day. Just like for those who don't know, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, I can't think of his name. Damn it. I can't think of his name right now. As I tell you this, he created Black History Week. And he wanted to celebrate Frederick Douglass's birthday. Mm. <clears throat> uh, uh, I cannot think. I'm trying. I'm, I'm, think I'm thinking my wheel's spinning on that one too. Woodson. Carter G. Woodson. Woo. I was ashamed of myself. I, I had a Carter different G. name Wilson. in mind, too. Carter G. Wilson wanted to celebrate Frederick Douglass' birthday, and he had a Black History Week. It evolved into the late 60s, mid-70s to Black History Month. That's why Black History Month is in February. So when y'all, when you hear people say, man, they gave us the coldest month. No, no, no. One of the original emancipators is being celebrated, and we took the month. And Carter G. Woodson literally said in his book, The Miseducation of the Negro, if you only can celebrate your history for 30 days for one month, it's not worth celebrating. So he said that because he, he wanted you to celebrate it for the entire month. So for those who complain that Black History Month is in February and we need to do this, let's create our own day, the first day of June, the first Saturday of June. That way a lot of us have the weekends off and have either a family or a, a church, or a communal, or all of, or organization, whether you be what is known as a street gang, whether you a Mason, a Eastern Star, uh, 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 or one of the Divine Nine, one of the uh, sororities or fraternities. Let's make that our day where we can celebrate things like food. We can bring, like this is Jewish holiday, 
And what they do is label all the food on the plate to identify the struggle. Black eyed peas come from Africa, if y'all don't know. Rice comes from Africa, if y'all don't know. Yams come from Africa, if y'all don't know. These things are all part of our traditions. So you can make sure you have those things on the table that day to represent our ancestry, to represent the way we show love with food. But I would love to see a nationwide first Saturday of June every year, even if you just invite your children to your house and acknowledge Juneteenth, acknowledge your grandmother. You ain't got to go back to Frederick Douglass and, and Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and Whitney Young and, 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 and Fannie Lou Hamer. Talk about your grandmother. Talk about your great grandmother. Share pictures. Establish a tradition. If we want to create, and this is the foundation of cultural Black America. This is how we get our thing back. That day, you know, we always, man, we only going to shop with Black people on this day. Well, we need to be shopping with Black people as much as possible. But mm -hmm. if we make this a holiday, we, don't, we ain't got to put up no flyers. We ain't got to put up no posters. And, hey, we ain't, got to, we ain't got to do nothing but say, you know what? More rap said we should do this. We do it. We started, we started in 2024. It get bigger in 2025. Before you know it, the entire nation, just like this. I wanted to catch on just like this. And the sisters will know this better than the brothers. And, and I, be, I now I'll be hearing brothers say it. When you make a good point in the conversation, nationwide, sisters go, that part. It, it wasn't no memo sent out for that. You sit in the room full of black women, they'll be talking, girl, she had on that ugly dress. Ooh, that part. Just like that part caught on, word up caught on, dope caught on, and all other slang caught on. Let's make this catch on. Reestablishing the culture in our community. We need to be reaching out to people who are in street organizations, the Crips, the Bloods, the GDs, the Vice Lords, or whatever it is, whatever street organization in your community, and have them participate as well. Because one thing I know for sure, one thing's for sure, two things for certain. It's hard to rob somebody that you actually know. Mm -hmm. I ain't saying it's impossible. I'm not saying it's impossible, but if you just saw Big Mo hang you a beer at the cookout last week, hey man, you go, you want something to drink? I guarantee you, it's harder for Big. It's harder for somebody to steal Big Mo car because the big homie, uh 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 uh, that's the homie from the cookout. Uh uh, don't do that. Right. Now I'm not saying that's gonna happen every time. Ain't no exacts outside of math. One plus one is always gonna be two. But if we do that, we can get it popping. And then you'll be familiar with the people in your community again. Now you can share stuff. You can share opportunities, job opportunities. You can share uh, career opportunities. You can share our little podcast. And you can you can make things happen and move forward. That's my request to everybody who ever support this show. Even if you never watch again, create something for the first Saturday in June 2024 whether it be just communal just uh, uh, you and your if you got two kids and and, 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 and your boyfriend just got a stepdaddy license y'all fold sit there he brings something he bring pictures of his children his parents his grandparents his sisters and brothers you share with yours introduce your children to your ancestry and build from there that's the only way this thing is going to work we have to know who would look like I said, my dad, my parents were activists. I epigenetically absorbed it from when I epigenetically absorbed my activism from John Williams and Dolores and that. Uh, uh, BJ is extremely pro black. My son, Bria, blacker than me. You know what I mean? And we need to continue to do it. Like my nephew, him, he down there in Florida with his daddy, his, 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 his you know, his bonus mama, because I, I like that bonus mama term. I don't like that step. His brothers and sisters down there, they meet his son down there, his wife down there. His mom is cool with Mike and, and, and Keisha. So 
we need to get it popping like that. Even if we just do a Zoom meeting, if it rained that day, everybody do a Zoom. We have to start looking at each other. We have to start looking at each other. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah, he bro. said, uh, I was like, huh? June 22nd and the 30th is my birthday. I be, you know, you already know, like Michael Jackson, I'll be there. Why? But mm. that's what we need to do, man. That's how we can, we could save our community like that. Because I don't know about, I, 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 ain't, I don't know everybody in this chat room, but I know one thing. Everybody in this chat room that's black, I can guarantee you this. Every one of y'all couldn't wait to Thanksgiving every year. Every year you couldn't wait to Thanksgiving to go to Big Mama house, Mud Deer house, or whatever you call your grandmama. You couldn't wait. It's some don't people that only place. Huh? Rap, I'm gonna tell you, bro. I don't I don't, I, I'm, I'm sure you understand how heavy that is what you just laid out, man. I'm, matter of fact, you get some homework. You gotta write that up too. Okay, you gotta write that up. Got I mean, like that's 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 a heavy idea right there. And I love man, that. Man, I, I already put it in motion. I talked to my pastor and and, and, and I talked to some of the brothers at the Masonic Lodge. I talked to some of my homies in the Divine Nine. I called my homegirl Sheila. She a, a rolling 30 crip. She yeah. put it, she put it in play right now. She out there in uh, South Central right now putting it together. We gonna do this, man. We're going to do this. That's we are not going to let this slip through the cracks. You know, this is, this is not just going to be another pipe dream. Guess what? And we, some of us, some of our relatives, we can't stand the sight of them. We're just going to go to the other side of the party when they show up. It because is is. Some, things, some things are unforgivable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we talked about that today. Um, yeah, some things are unforgivable. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But we still have to come together as like family. Like, like my man, one of my favorite people, if not my favorite person in history, the world knows him as Stokely Carmichael. Before he transitioned mm. to the ancestral realm, he changed his name to Kwame Torre. Right. He said it's family, community, clan, culture. Remember those things, family, community, mm -hmm. clan, culture. If y'all don't know what a clan is, your clan is another word of saying your neighborhood. Culture yeah. is everybody that's in that's in your community. Culture is the community. So that's why, yeah, you might be part of a street organization. You might even be out here selling dope and, and, and whatever else on the street. But guess what? Everybody that's standing outside on that corner got a mama. And a dad, mm -hmm. and, uh, and aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, cousins, and grandparents. So that means that that person is a human being. And that person is in survival mode. And we cannot judge anybody who's in survival mode because that's all they, that's, they trying to see tomorrow. And yeah. we, I'm going to do it. We're, we're going to do it. Whether it's just Big Mo family and, and Big Mo and Wit, Brian. His loved ones, you know, mm -hmm. if, if it's just us doing it, guess what? Little Mike and Mike, they gonna get in on it. And Pam, my cousin Pam, and my sisters, my sister got six children. They all, man, my nieces and nephews swear by me. So if nothing else, we're gonna do it, and it's gonna catch on. We are gonna keep doing it because otherwise, we are doomed. That's it. That's it. Draw that up. You know, something that we can present to people, man. I mean, we'll keep track of it here on the show every week, man. You know, yeah, just keep putting yeah. that putting that information out there because that's that's a beautiful idea, man. <clears throat> that's a beautiful idea. All right. Yeah, well, listen. That's our show for tonight, man. Shout out to everybody in the chat room, man. We appreciate the participation. We appreciate y'all for tapping in. We appreciate y'all for sharing them links. If you didn't share the link, share that link. You know, let them come back and watch it, whether we live or not. But before we get out of here, rap, you got something before we go? You know what? I just want everybody to, if nothing else, listen to the last 15 minutes of the show. 
Tell your friends and family, ladies and gentlemen, haters and bitter friends, to listen to the last 15 minutes of the show. You don't even have to like our show. You can hate our show, but if you do hate it, I'm going to need you to go ahead and subscribe. Just subscribe just because you hate it. I can't, I can't stand, I can't wait to see what these dummies talking about next week. Subscribe. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I need y'all to support the movement, the Park Bench movement. Park Bench Media, that includes Wrap It Up Sports, that's on Park Bench Media. Uh, I mean, that's on Wrap It Up. I need you to, uh, at the end of the bench, I need you to support that. We are on four days a week. Hold My Beer Sports is on Monday. I'm on Tuesday, Build and Destroy on the end of the bench media. Wednesday, we're right here on Park Bench. Wrap It Up Sports is on Thursday. And we are going to reboot Rapping with H Rap, but we're going to be talking to people. Everybody in the history of Earth has a story. Whether you think your story is interesting or not, it's up to you. We want you. That's another way we're going to build a community. You have a story that, that's going to be told. Do I want to know when you were sleeping around with such and such? No. But guess what? It's something significant that happened to you that could be used as motivation for anybody in our community or anybody on earth. We need y'all to hit subscribe. We need y'all to tell a friend and tell a friend and tune in every day at 7 p 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Big Mo H Rap. And I always remember this, only teach when you are asked, but all constantly study every day. Only teach when you are asked, but study every day. With that being said, two fingers, one word, peace. What I'm not going to do is turn this shit down to make you happy.